Yes, hello there and welcome to this class. Now in this class I want us to look at organic chemistry and let's begin from organic chemistry one. So let's begin by the definition of organic chemistry. So what is organic chemistry? So simply, this organic chemistry is the chemistry of carbon chain compounds bonded to hydrogen atoms. So if you have a carbon chain compound, as you can see, if we have the carbon chain compound and then it is bonded to hydrogen, now that forms the basis of organic chemistry. So we see that in organic chemistry, there is mainly the study of carbon compounds, except the oxides of carbon, which mainly include carbon 2 oxide and carbon 4 oxide. So again, remember, in organic chemistry, we study the carbon chain, except the carbon oxide compounds. So the carbon oxide compounds are not a part of the organic chemistry. So basically, organic chemistry is study the carbon chain compounds bonded to hydrogen, as well as other atoms that you are going to look at but not carbon-oxygen compounds comprising of carbon-2 oxide and carbon-4 oxide compounds. So you see that the carbon element can be able to form stable covalent bonds with other carbon atoms and with other elements because we see that in these chains that we have in organic chemistry, we can see that this carbon atom is able to bond to other carbon atoms as well. It is able to bond to other different types of atoms that we have. It's not only carbon bonding with hydrogen, but can, the carbon can bond with other carbon atoms, the carbon can bond with hydrogen, or the carbon can bond with, other, uh, with the other atoms that are in the periodic table. So why is it that the carbon atom is able to, to form different types of bonds? So the first reason we see that the carbon atom uses all four valence electrons in order to form the covalent bond. So it uses all four valent electrons in order to be able to form the bonds that there is. Also, apart from that, you see that the carbon atom is able to form a single bond, is able to form a double bond, is able to form a triple bond with other carbon atoms or with other elements as large. Like, for example, you see that the carbon atom can be able to form a single bond between carbon and other carbon atoms, whereby in the hydrocarbon families, you are going to see that this family will be called the alkenes. Apart from that, we see that the carbon atom can also be able to form a double bond between other carbon atoms or between other atoms in the periodic table. And this family which have double bond between the carbon atoms, we are going to look at it. It's called the alkenes. And then finally, we have the alkynes. For the alkynes, as you can see, alkynes form the family whereby the carbon atom is bonded using three covalent bonds to other carbon atoms or to other elements. So a single bond is called an alkene. A double bond, the family is called an alkene. And a triple bond, the family will be called an alkyne. So apart from that, the third reason, uh, we can say that the carbon atom is able to join with other different carbon atoms to, lo to form very long chains, a phenomenon which is called polymerization. So the different monomers, so the different monomers of carbon can be able to react with other different monomers of carbon to form a very long chain which is referred to as a polymer. Now, the process by which monomers react to form a polymer, that process will see that it is called a polymerization reaction. So this polymerization reaction, we are going to look at it in the upcoming subtopics. So apart from that, let's now look at uh, hydrocarbons and see what are hydrocarbons? So mainly, hydrocarbons, as we studied, we introduced hydrocarbons in Form 1, and we saw that the hydrocarbons, so this mainly comprises of carbon bonded to hydrogen only. So if carbon is bonded to hydrogen only, that compound is referred to as the hydrocarbon. So this mainly, uh, the hydrocarbon mainly forms a compound whereby carbon is bonded to hydrogen. So that compound is called a hydrocarbon. We see that the hydrocarbons are the simplest organic compounds that we have because they mainly comprise of only carbon and hydrogen in that compound. So that is that. It only comprises of hydrogen and carbon in that compound. So that compound is referred to as the hydrocarbon. So apart from that, let's now look at the main groups or the families of hydrocarbons because we have different families of hydrocarbons, uh, example like for the ones that we have just introduced. So they can be called families or they can be called the main group. So in exam, if you have been asked, what are the main groups or what are the main families or the families of hydrocarbons? So they include, as you can see, so they include the alkenes, 
uh, like whereby we say that alkenes. So this may, these are hydrocarbons whereby the carbon is bonded to one, uh, to one covalent bond. So the carbon is only bonded to one covalent bond. So apart from that, the other family, we have the alkenes. So what are the alkenes? So like for the alkenes, we see that alkenes, this is a family whereby carbon atom is bonded to two covalent bonds. So in this structure of the alkenes, there is at least a double bond in the structure. So apart from that, the third family we have, we have the last family, which is now referred to as the alkynes. So the alkynes, this, uh, this is the hydrocarbon family, whereby the carbon atom is bonded to three covalent bonds. So at least in this structure, uh, like at least in the molecule of this or in the structure of the alkyne, so you are going to see at least a triple bond. So in the molecule, if you see a triple bond, you will know automatically this is an alkyne because it has three covalent bonds in the structure. So apart from that, let's continue to another definition of terms whereby let's also define between saturated and unsaturated hydrocarbons as well as the aromatic hydrocarbons. So what are saturated hydrocarbons? So for the saturated hydrocarbons, these are hydrocarbons which cannot discolorize bromine water, they cannot discolorize potassium permanganate, they cannot de discolorize potassium dichromate. And as well, the saturated hydrocarbons when burnt, they do not produce soot. So they do not have any soot, they don't produce soot. Example, you see the kerosene, so they do not produce soot. So these types of hydrocarbons which cannot discolorize potassium permanganate, they cannot discolorize bromine water, they cannot discolorize potassium dichromate, and when burnt, they don't produce soot. So these hydrocarbons, they are referred to as the saturated hydrocarbons. Example of saturated hydrocarbons in the three families, we have the alkenes. So all the members of the alkenes, all the members, they are saturated hydrocarbon, meaning that they do not produce soot when burnt. Potassium permanganate, dichromate, bromine water do not decolorize. So these are saturated hydrocarbons. Remember, they only comprise of the alkenes in the family of hydrocarbons. So apart from that, we have now the, we have the second one, which is the unsaturated hydrocarbons. And for the unsaturated hydrocarbons, remember, the unsaturated hydrocarbons mainly comprise of the alkenes and the alkynes. So it comprises of those two, which are the alkenes and the alkynes. So for these saturated, uh, for the saturated hydrocarb unsaturated rather hydrocarbons, we see that they, de they can be able to discolorize bromine water, they are able to discolorize potassium permanganate, they are able to discolorize potassium dichromate. And as well, when they are burnt in the atmosphere, they produce soot. Alkenes produce less soot, but alkynes produce the most, uh, the most amount of soot. So in short, the unsaturated endocarbons, they can be able to discolorize bromine water, potassium permanganate, potassium dichromate, and as well when burnt, they produce, a lot of, uh, they produce a lot of soot. So in the families, in the three families, we see that the families of uh, the members in the family which belong to unsaturated endocarbons, we have the alkenes and we also have the alkynes. So they all belong to the unsaturated hydrocarbons for the reasons that you have just stated. So apart from that, you can see that we have the aromatic hydrocarbons, whereby for the aromatic hydrocarbons, this mainly comprises of the benzene rings. So the benzene rings mostly, they appear in the aromatic hydrocarbon. So why is it that they appear in the aromatic hydrocarbon? It's because most of these structures have a sweet scent. Most of these structures, they have a, a sweet smell, aroma. From the word aromatic, they have aroma. So they can have different types of smells. And that's why they fall under the aromatic hydrocarbons. So apart from that, uh, let's look at an experiment by which you can be able to determine or be able to distinguish between saturated and unsaturated hydrocarbons. So in the experiment, we can use different test tubes. We can use gaseous hydrocarbons or we can use the liquid hydrocarbons. So for the experiment heading, uh, we can say uh, the heading to verify uh, saturated and unsaturated hydrocarbons. So that is the heading of the experiment. 
Then after that, we have the apparatus, which will be listed, and then we go to procedure. So for the procedure, we can say, add three to four drops of bromine water to a clean test tube. So rather, let's say at least add one centimeter cubed. Add one centimeter cubed of brown bromine water in a clean test tube. So after that, we can say, bubble the hydrocarbon inside bromine water and then make observations. So that is just the experiment. So add one centimeter cubed of bromine water in a clean test tube and then bubble the hydrocarbon inside the bromine uh, contained inside the test tube and then finally make observations. So that is if we are using gaseous hydrocarbon. So if you are using a gaseous hydrocarbon, we are going to bubble the gas inside the bromine water. But if we are using liquid hydrocarbon, like for example, we have pentane, hexane, heptane, octane, onane, decane. If we are using that, we are going to add at least half amount of the bromine water that was added or equal amount. So if you are using a liquid hydrocarbon, we'll say like add one centimeter cubed of bromine water inside a clean test tube. So after that, you can say uh, then add one centimeter cubed of the hydrocarbon liquid in the test tube having bromine water and make observations. And then finally, you're going to make observation. So the same, same experiment you can repeat using potassium permanganate or potassium dichromate in place of the bromine water. So what are the observations make, uh, made? Let's compare between potassium permanganate and bromine water to see the observation using the different compounds that we have. So the first compound, let's test the first compound that we know. Let's test kerosene. So we take kerosene and then we bubble kerosene inside potassium permanganate. And then we also bubble uh, the kerosene inside bromine water. So if we mix the kerosene with potassium permanganate, there'll be no observable color change. If we mix it with bromine water, there is no observable color change. It means that kerosene falls under the family of, al family of alkenes because kerosene is unable to discolorize potassium permanganate or bromine water. So apart from that, you can use another compound which is now the laboratory gas. Laboratory gas, it can be methane gas, it can be butane gas. Just from the word methane ending with A-N-E and the butane ending with the word A-N-E, it means that these are alkanes. So since these are alkanes, alkanes are unsaturated hydrocarbon. So we expect there is no color change that is going to be observed. So if you bubble the laboratory gas inside potassium permanganate, no observable change will, be, will take place. And also in bromine water, no observable change is going to take place. So why is it that no observable change will take place? It's because laboratory gas methane butane so these gases are alkenes and we say that alkenes are saturated hydrocarbons so they don't discolorize bromine water or potassium permanganate so apart from that you can use also the turpentine whereby the turpentine is the it's like a liquid the oil that is used in making the roads that car very black oil the black oil that is used in making roads is the one which is called turpentine so let's use turpentine. So if we, if we add the turpentine in potassium permanganate, so we'll see that it is going to de discolorize the potassium permanganate. Why is this so? It's because turpentine is an unsaturated. So since it has discolorized the potassium permanganate, therefore the conclusions made is that turpentine is an unsaturated hydrocarbon, meaning that it can fall between alkene or an alkyne. So the same, same, the same, same, uh, the turpentine, we, we add it to bromine water. So if we add it to bromine water, it is going to discolorize the bromine water. So what are the results we are going to say? So if it has discolorized bromine water, therefore results will say that turpentine is an unsaturated hydrocarbon because it has discolorized bromine water and potassium permanganate. Then the next one is hexane. Hexane just as the word ends, A-N-E, it means that this is an alkene. So if it's an alkene, alkenes are saturated hydrocarbons. So if they are saturated hydrocarbons, it, it will mean that hexane will not discolorize potassium permanganate or bromine water because it falls under the family of alkenes. Alkenes are saturated hydrocarbons. They don't discolorize potassium permanganate, bromine water, or potassium dichromate. After that, we have the next one is pentene. What happens when we dissolve pentene? 
uh, pentene in potassium permanganate or bromine water. So what will happen is that the potassium permanganate is going to discolorize. The bromine water also is going to discolorize. So why is it that it is going to discolorize? Now, it will discolorize because potassium, uh, pentene is an alkene. Since pentene is an alkene, remember we say that all alkenes are unsaturated hydrocarbons. So since it is an alkene, it is going to discolorize the potassium permanganate and the bromine water because they are unsaturated hydrocarbons. So that is that in uh, as far as the saturated and saturated hydrocarbon is concerned. So that is that. You can be asked a question in an exam. You have been given pentene or the same question. So explain which hydrocarbons are saturated or unsaturated uh, being given potassium permanganate. So you are just going to look at the experiment. If you see it's an alkene, unsaturated, it's going to discolorize. If you, if you see it's an alkene, saturated, no discolorization. So what are the conclusions that you're going to make in this experiment? So in this experiment, we'll make a conclusion and say that kerosene and laboratory gas and hexane gas are saturated hydrocarbons because they did not discolorize this, uh, these uh, chemicals. As well, we can say that turpentine and pentene are unsaturated hydrocarbons. Why? It's because they were able to discolorize the potassium permanganate and the bromine water. And that's how you give the inferences and that's how you give the conclusion at the end of the experiment.